Hey everyone, this is Lomi, and this week I'm trying out a new medium for face-ups, which is Core Watercolors from Golden Paints. I've always liked Golden's acrylics, but I've never had a chance to use their watercolors, and I've also never used watercolors for a face-up, so this should be interesting. I requested a box of samples from Golden over a year ago now, and a few months ago they offered me these watercolor dot cards as well. I do want to note this is not sponsored, as the company offers paint samples to anyone who requests them. I'm not surprised because their stuff is really high quality and they're obviously confident that their samples will win you over. They sent me three separate cards, which represent some of their more popular palettes. They're a beautiful mix of colors, and I'm really looking forward to giving these a try. Not just for face-ups, but for artwork too. They also sent a booklet that shows swatches of all the colors in their range. They have a really wide variety of yellows and reds and fewer greens, but green isn't a color you would frequently use in face-ups. The booklet also bears a legend that explains the rating of each paint. The swatch shows coverage over pencil and ink, what the paint looks like straight and when diluted further, and the symbols show what colors are opaque, transparent, and which ones stain or granulate, which means the pigment particles will clump together and give a less smooth finish. Since I've never used these watercolors before, the first thing I decided to do was swatch the palette I thought was prettiest, which was the High Chroma set. I add some water and let the paints activate before I get started, then I just do a couple quick swatches that get progressively larger using this set, and the watercolor paper that came with the dot card. Right away, I was pretty pleased with how fast the colors activated, and how smooth and intense the color was. It's been years since I used watercolors at all, and these really make me want to do a painting, so hopefully I'll be able to find some time to do that. I've always found that Golden's acrylics perform in a pretty uniform way, so hopefully that extends to the watercolors as well. As beautiful as this palette is, I'm using a different one for the test face-up. I chose Mars Orange Deep and Manganese Blue for the colors for a very simple reason. They're basically opposites. Aside from one being blue and one being orange, one is rated as strongly opaque and high staining, while the other is rated as high transparency and granulating. This will let me quickly see the full spectrum of what to expect from these paints, as these two colors embody all the different characteristics of this watercolor line. Robin, my doll family A practice head, has been sealed three times using Mr. Super Clear and is ready to go. I didn't let these paints activate quite as long as the others did, so it took me a little extra stirring to get the color mixed smoothly and ready to go. Before I start on Robin, I do a few test strokes on paper to make sure I'm happy with how well I've mixed it. It's obviously a lot thinner than what I typically use with my acrylics and even my gouache, but it feels pretty good. So going in with the Mars Orange Deep, I load up my brush and give it a go, and after just four strokes with this paint, I'm honestly blown away. The color is so intense and it goes on perfectly smoothly with the most beautiful taper on these lashes. I love experimenting with different paints and different consistencies, and honestly I've never had lashes go on like this. On top of that, it just keeps going. The color stays strong enough that I'm able to do far more lashes than I normally would be able to without reloading my brush. After doing a whole row of lashes, I'm pretty much stunned. I thought they would be nice, but I didn't think they'd be like this. For the brow, I try something a little different, diluting the paint a bit more and using lots of strokes to try to build up depth by layering lots of fine hairs over each other. 
A higher concentration of pigment can be used for bolder color, and it pretty quickly becomes clear that these would be awesome paints for doing anything that needs dimension because of that color building. The biggest catch there is for people like me, I guess, because my hands are really shaky, and I really only have one chance to get a hair right. If it goes wrong, my odds of being able to darken or improve a line by going over it again are pretty much non-existent. On the other eye, I used the manganese blue, which is a much more transparent color, but still very heavily pigmented, which I love. This paint is interesting compared to the Mars orange, because it goes on a little darker than it looks after it dries, whereas the orange doesn't really change color. The transparency is really beautiful for the tips of the lashes, and I find that I personally like the more transparent paint for the brow hairs because I feel like the extra transparency gives even better depth and dimension. The brush load doesn't go quite as far as the orange did, so the more translucent colors would need to be reloaded more frequently, but the paint flows so easily and naturally that I'm really excited to see about using these in future projects. When working with such fine lines, the granulation of this pigment wasn't a problem at all. Nothing seemed to be clumping together, and all of my lines stayed really smooth. The last test I want to put these through is cleaning. One of the reasons I love gouache paints for face-ups is they're easy to remove with plain water if I mess up or if I need a few tries to work out a brow shape I like. Using plain water, the more translucent blue wipes off super easily. There's a little of it left on the lower lid where I put it on more heavily, but a few wipes cleans that off pretty much perfectly. Which is promising and exciting, because it means paints of this rating will be very forgiving. The Mars Orange Deep is another story, which I sort of expected because of the high staining rating the pigment has. That color does not wipe off well at all, and that really underlines the importance of sealing a doll thoroughly before starting a face-up. This has very heavily colored the doll's sealant, and while I think it could probably be scrubbed out with a magic eraser, the doll would then need to be resealed before continuing the face-up. So the high staining colors are very unforgiving, and probably better left for people who are very certain of their brushwork, and confident that they won't need to wipe line work during the face-up process. This is pretty much the same case with acrylic paints though, so if you're new to face-ups or just shaky like me, using the non-staining core watercolors or a different kind of paint such as gouache is probably best. Either way, I'm really impressed with how these paints have performed overall, and they're definitely something I intend to use in future doll projects. That's all for today though. Thanks for watching. Bye.